it, it comes down to what are you part of? Um, and that's going to be the the thing to always consider, you know, how many yeah. people would read, you know, Todd Sanders or something like that, you know, like, or, you know, Philip Marlowe or Dick Tracy, you know, like th those are the things to consider. Um, Some people still read Dick Tracy. I think there's quality to it. I mean, but it is really niche. That's why I've always laughed when like you would see a Star Trek episode and they're like, oh yeah, this character so-and-so is a big fan of like 20th century Dick Tracy stories. And it's like, in what fucking world? You know, but also it's because they don't want to create their own thing. They have to make it relatable to the audience. Um, but it's also a big part of just like, what are you uh, knowing about with respects to, you know, like, how did you get into it? Right. Like, did you get into it because like your politics were, you know, knee jerk anti libtard or I just hate SJW. So we're going to read old stuff mm. or is it a, um, well, they also did it. Um, uh, I know that's Picard, but they also did it for, um, what's his fucking name? The shapeshifter from DS nine. Uh, but yeah, oh. but th well. things, to, things to consider that, you know, the radio uh, drama is underrated. I didn't know that Alec Baldwin did a version of The Shadow. I oh, yeah? Know that. I didn't hmm. know that. No, but anyways, Odo, so... thank you. Odo, that was going to bother me. But uh, um, moving down here real quick. Without a doubt, the most surprising and significant development in recent American poetry has been the wide-scale and unexpected reemergence of popular poetry. Namely, oh, see, this is this is where you get this discussion. This discussion. Name, oh my god! Name, namely oh! rap, cowboy poetry, poetry slams, and certain overly accessible types of what was once defiantly an avant-garde genre, performance poetry. These new forms of popular verse have seemingly come out of nowhere, out of significant forces in American culture. Rap especially has become ubiquitous in our society, not only filling concert halls, radio programming, but also heard and seen in films, television, and live theater. Although far less commercial, other forms have shown enormous vitality and all these new poetic forms have thrived without support of the university or liter literary establishment. So basically, the proles, right? We, we've yeah. got our, 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 our prole poetry and it's performance based. So, I mean, if this, I would argue, I mean, let's not kid ourselves. This is true. 21 years later, this is all true. Yep. You know, well, now the, it's mumble rap. It's not like gang. Sure, rap sure. Anymore. But I yeah. mean, you, you, someone would probably argue that like performance poetry is someone saying shout your abortion. Performance poetry yeah. would be someone going to one of those like female rage camps where you break shit. Oh, did you see the one they're out. yelling in the woods? Yes, you know? that's yeah. what I'm referring to. Oh my god! Like, is that not just pure performance art for someone? Like, would would not some you know man huffing his own farts not simply say? I am going out of the way to appreciate um, this as, a, as an artistic thing. Yeah, that'd be quite interesting. But but Field it's marksman and hand to hand combat. Yeah, he's free. no, but like yeah, greater hip hop culture in general, I guess you could say is yeah has free verse in it and yeah. Um, but so yeah, that but this is 2003, so this was like the real like immense popularization of a of lot what of was rap to come. and hip hop. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because you have to realize that the hipsters kind of like rap, like took a huge blow in the, I mean, also this is 2003. So like eight mile just came out last year. Yeah. So of course, yeah. like that's going to definitely hit the, hit the road on it. Yeah. And plus even before that, in the late nineties too, I think that you had the, one of the most popular episodes of our, the Arsenio Hall show was, uh, he interviewed Maya Angelou and said that rap is, and she said rap is poetry. Oh, that's right. She gave and then of course you have legitimacy the, to it. Yeah. And then of course you have the whole, you know, Amanda Gorman shit stuff today. I mean, it's oh, all there, uh, yeah. right? Like, or, or I hate to do the whole decline meme, but like it's, it's presently here, you know? Yeah. So, um, then these new forms, Oh, wait, go. where are we? Yeah. Start. In literary culture that during most of the 20th century declared verse a dying technique, no one would have predicted that this vastly popular revival, in the way that Edmund, Wil Edmund Wilson could never have foreseen, verse has changed into a growth industry, though its rehabilitation has happened mostly off printed page. Most of verse in the music take the removal of rap now going to reggaeton slash dance hall for the new diverse. Yeah, that's even worse, in my opinion. Yeah, it's wholeheartedly agree. I'd, I'd prefer old school gangster rap than this stuff they got now. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, 
because at least for horror core American blacks. <laughs> Old rap heads now know what it felt when heavy metal heads saw grunge out of the tick rap. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It's like when hair metal saw, it's like when hair, when, when a glam saw grunge on the horizon, it was all over. You know, when they saw, when they heard Cher Brock on the radio, it was over. <laughs> so Jenny Lane, it was over. Okay. It was over. And we're cheering. So, bye. It's so over. Bye. 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 Do the Sam Hyde bit. Bye. 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 Cherry pie. Now it's about, you know, smelling something teenage wise. Um, but then, you know, I shouldn't say that because because metal went underground during the 90s with Florida death metal and a lot of like tech death was born out of the 1990s. But anyways, that's not here or there. Uh, it's rehabilitation has happened mostly off printed page. Whenever one thinks of the artistic quality of these new poetic forms, one must concede that they, at the very least they reassuringly dem- demonstrate the ability, human, the abiding human need for poetry. Uh, I, I don't know about that. In terms of like rap being the, well, maybe, maybe. Uh, please note that while admiring the energy of the revival, I do not maintain that these new forms of popular verse represent the best new poetry of the period. Individually considered as works of literary art, um, most of the these work is undistinguishable or worse, though some of it's small, small and lively. Collectively, however, the work has a name enormous implications for the future of poetry yes yes because now poetry will no longer be a european thing it will be a other type a of global thing a global thing so there you go because of course even more so than other music and poetry styles hip-hop culture really is like a global uh global slop phenomenon where all of the, the struggling slop. masses of the third world can also enjoy the oppression politics of uh, yeah. activist hip hop anyways um and slam poetry as well i'm sure that there's a big slam poet for example brazil has a huge slam poetry culture but anyways not only does it i wonder how into- much like it's a side note i wonder how much that's funded by like weird uh, ngos, NGOs? Yeah, yeah it's huge i'm yeah. like i i i, I uh, <laughs> yeah i'm genuinely curious yeah there's know. slam poetry in tbilisi in 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 uh, georgia and uh, you know why? Because for every 50 Georgians, there's one NGO. Or, wait, for every 15 Georgians, there's one foreign NGO. So there you go. Anyways, yeah, a lot of it is because you have to realize that uh, Brazilian academia was infiltrated from the 70s and 80s onwards. There was a lot of like Delizians in particular that went down there. Uh, but also like in the literary arts, there was a lot of infiltration. Uh and there's a lot of NGOs that fund uh, poetry and other cultural outreach things. And it just so happens that slam poetry really took off in uh, favela culture. You know, it's almost as if like hip hop and, po- and slam poetry, that they were like perfectly engineered for uh, non-whites. Yeah. Yeah. For, like a lot of like global South um, count, like revolutionary political pastiches you know what i mean but yeah basically it's perfect the perfect art form for non-whites uh and, and some white people of a certain you know like there's a, like there's a lot of uh new york city uh podcasters that talk about hip-hop that are approaching 40 mid 40s and, and mid 30s so anyways um mm. gnc culture has been funded and used as a weapon by ngos yeah exactly 100 john d uh, oh so Collectively, over the work has enormous implications of future poetry. Not only does it call into question many contemporary assumptions about the current state of poetry, the new popular poetry reflects the broader cultural forces that are now reshaping all the literary arts. Well, you know, even hip hop was uh, engineered by the regime as well. There even hip hop art. There's rap artists that have said themselves that they were told to per- push certain messages by the record companies, and there were notes that were handed out to them. So make of that what you will. While the new popular popular poetry has received immense courage from the electric media, immense coverage from the electric media and general press, it has garnered relatively little attention from intellectuals and virtually none from establishment poetry critics. Oh, oh boy. You only have to wait about 10 years. That was about a, well, not even 10 years. No, five years from 2003. Yeah. Really, really just, yeah, I mean by two thousand five, 
there, there were was a, a greater really, academic respect. Yeah, towards hip hop culture and free verse and slam poetry. Yeah, I mean, I I know JSTOR is just like one you know journal like or database of sorts, but like you can even just like do a time frame reference from like yeah. 2001 to 2007. And you'll notice around 2005, there's a huge jump up in like in literary journals talking about rap. Yeah. Yeah. So jump. You, only, you only had to wait five years or not even three, four years before yeah. it happened. Yeah. Um, if they have noticed the new popular poetry at all, they immediately see how little it has in common with its kind of poetry. They have been trained to consider worthy of study. It does not grow out of a long esteemed and meticulously studied high art traditions of classicism, romanticism, modernism, or postmodernism that inform most literary uh, culture. Yeah. Go down, Prude. Sorry. Yeah. Most literary scholarship. scholarship. In fact, in general terms, it hardly seems to connect to any conventional academic notion of literary poetry what is a consci conscientious critic supposed to do with eminem or jay-z as individual texts for an for analysis snoop dogg doggy style or wallace mcrae's the cowboy curmudgeon offers harold bloom or helen velder little opportunity to display their critical chops well in only the span this is why i'm kind of glad Look. like reaction content or reading content on the right like yeah, hate reading the Guardian. No offense, Morgoth, but like hate reading the Guardian or like doing a long response to some like lefty on like as a YouTube video essays. I'm kind of glad that's dead. Yes, yeah. uh, there's very little to display their critical chop. Maybe there, maybe it's just because we get it at this point. But I'm kind of glad yeah. that that's dead. There's only it only took ten years, whereabouts, right before the 2010s, to where poetry and the study of literature and academia starts to engage a little bit with popular culture, especially hip hop culture to them being predominant, especially when it comes to these other like post-colonial studies and, yeah. and media culture, pop culture studies, media, media studies to where that becomes predominant. And you have to have a highly specialized degree to actually study classic literature in the Western canon. Isn't that funny? It only took 10 years. Mm. So what are the odds? What are the odds, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there so this article is sort of like a canary in the coal mine. Oh yeah. Really. Um yeah. but uh, I'll I'll take it here. All right. Yeah. In order to discuss these new trends, however, one must address two preliminary issues. The first concerns terminology. One thing becomes immediately clear in comparing various modes of contemporary poetry, namely the inadequacy of our conventional literary vocabulary. This only gets worse as we get more retarded. Uh, the general yep. term poetry, for example, now encompasses so many diverse and often irreconcilable artistic enterprises oh, yeah. that it often proves insufficient to distinguish the critical issues at stake. This essay will use the term poetry as an all-inclusive sense to include the forms of verse, written or oral, the shape um, that shape language for literary effect. The term is used as a neutral description without imputing any literary value on the object or objects which it refers to, but in order to distinguish and compare the fundamentally different forms of verse now being practiced, there will need to be a form to qualify poetry, which is literary and popular. Um, the second issue, of course, is evaluation, um, which, of course, that's always incredibly partisan. Who would have guessed? Oh, wow. Um, but again, um, you know, th this person's trying to make sense of the new oral poetry, which is popular poetry. You know, cowboy poetry is traditionally recited from mem memory. Slams are, of course, live performances, sometimes from a text, more often from memory, oftentimes impromptu these days. Um, and, of course, conventional stuff is the books, journals, evaluate. None of this has changed. But also, like, here's the thing. A hundred years ago in America, it was a thriving tradition of popular poetry, especially at the turn of the century. Yeah. A huge audience existed for verse. You read it in newspapers, magazines, pamphlets, and books, and almanacs. James Whitcomb Riley not only commanded a mass following, but he was a public figure who, did not, who dined at the White House and saw his birthday become an Indiana state holiday. Whoa! Um, this does not exist anymore, unless you are... Again, Amanda total, Gorman. Unless you're Amanda Gorman or some other totalizing... Uh, you know, uh, GNC supporter, you know? Yeah. Like my Angelou. Yeah. Like this does yeah. not exist, um, anymore because again, we've the one, like the map has been, the world has been flattened again, but it's been folded up in, in like a piece of paper and a pen has punctured through it. Um, yeah. because like one thing that gets sort of missed in the whole urban rural discourse, which always I find funny 
is, is that no one takes into serious consideration the degree in which the internet has changed things. Um, for, yeah. For like rural culture, because um, my cousins and stuff who've lived in this rural part of the world where I live have been part of generations that have lived here since the beginning or the mid uh, 19th century when the place got settled by other white Americans. And they sound nothing like their parents or their grandparents. I think a lot of that has to do with the way we talk on the internet and the kind of English we're exposed to. 